After posting a video on Starfleet's history of cloaking devices, some of you asked for one exploring how they worked and what constitutes various methods of stealth and even invisibility in Star Trek, so here we go. The most commonly thought of cloaking device is the type employed by the Romulans and the Klingons. This is a combination of several systems to mask all sorts of emissions, but what defines it as a cloak rather than simple stealth technology is the literal invisibility factor to both the eye and starship sensors. So the biggest factor involves the generation of a cloaking field, which actually bends light and active sensor emissions around its surface before allowing them to continue on their way uninterrupted. As the light or sensor scan never bounces back to the receiver, no reading is ever perceived. Emissions approaching the cloaked object from the rear, from this diagram, are likewise distorted around the cloak field before being allowed to continue on their way. Sometimes a slight distortion can be seen if the cloaking device is not functioning optimally, which is naturally a huge giveaway, even if the sensors register no detection. Physical matter is likewise not deflected by the cloaking field, so if a vessel flies through partially clingy substances, say a nebula made from wet flour, yeah, wet flour, the invisible vessel will be partially revealed. So it would be a really dumb idea to cloak a vessel, then hide it in a lake for example, because the water would reveal the silhouette of the ship. Why do that when you could just park it in the air? above the lake. These sorts of cloaking devices, however, do have several drawbacks. They demand a great deal of power to maintain, and such fields can produce all sorts of emissions regardless of everything they do mask. This is why the cloaking device is being constantly refined and tinkered with, and various models of ships are better suited for a cloak than others. Exploits are constantly being uncovered at about the same rate they are addressed, so no cloak remains perfect for long. One of the more common issues with a cloaking device is that the weapons and shields are generally inoperative when the cloak is active. This can be because of the power requirements needed to maintain the invisibility screen, or a form of reflection or diffraction in some instances where energy weapons might bounce back or angle away from the cloak field and strike the firing vessel. The Klingons briefly created a cloaking device in 2293 that allowed for torpedoes to be launched through it. However, this was destroyed because it did emit plasma exhaust that was still traceable. Other common limiting factors of the cloaking device includes the emission of tachyons, which are often produced by space-time distortions, transporters, and many other devices. These were often still difficult to detect, but the presence of them could indicate a nearby cloaked vessel. Additionally, a cloaking device would be hard-pressed to mask space-time warping, such as that produced by a vessel at warp, high impulse, or even the relatively small distortions from the singularity core of a Romulan warbird. By 2379, the Romulan Star Empire had managed to create a cloaking device that masked tachyon emissions too, and employed it on the Scimitar class prototype of the same name. This vessel also utilised a thaleron based power grid that supplied impressive levels of energy, giving it, frankly, lunatic levels of power, thus overcoming many of the original cloaking limitations. It could travel at warp 9.7 while cloaked, maintain shielding, and continue to fire energy weapons. Limitations of this are unknown. Maybe it could only maintain this state for minutes, hours, or there may have been signs of detection that the Enterprise never managed to uncover. The vessel was obliterated by Lieutenant Commander Data, so any first-hand experimentation of the tech went up with the scimitar. But as of the 24th century, it remains the most advanced cloaking system observed and unobserved by a Starfleet. There is a second common way of cloaking too, the interphasic cloak, and another related method of phase shifting. Interphasic cloak fields generate a matter-altering state using a phase inverter which generates a field, much like a cloaking screen or deflector shield. 
within the area of this field, matter is shifted to become out of phase with the current space-time continuum, basically moving it slightly into a parallel plane of existence. The strength of the interphasic cloak defines some of its capabilities. For example, the Voth use interphasic cloaks at a very light level to shift themselves slightly away from the visible spectrum and most sensor scans, but not far enough to evade the impressive array of sensors common for Starfleet ships. Seriously, the UFP make some of the best sensor systems around. Shifting further allows matter shrouded by interphasic cloaking to even pass through matter that is not under this realm shifting effect. When this interaction occurs, chroniton particles are produced, which may act as a key to detection of such a phasing cloaking device in operation, but like I said, only when it passes through matter in regular reality. Because matter and energy pass through interphasic cloaks, it means sensor scans cannot interact with the phased object at all, simply passing through the cloaked matter revealing nothing. Anion particle bombardment returns such interphased matter to a coherent space-time state, revealing the cloaked object. This sort of cloak was attempted by the Romulans in 2368, however their other systems proved to be incompatible with the cloak, and the Federation indulged in the Pegasus incident which I've already touched on several times before. This cloak has even more application than a regular light bending screen, not the least of which is in espionage. So even though it is a different technology than a regular cloaking device, it is still in the same vein, an invisibility field produced with clear tactical applications for spying. In a similar vein to this, we have simple observations by beings such as the Davidians, who exist in our prime universe but are naturally in this phase shifted state, meaning they're effectively observing from a plane of existence beyond our own. On top of this is the scary notion that a being observing from a dimension higher than ours is unperceivable to us, just as a 2D lifeform could not see a 3D one in any other form than the familiar 2D plane. Such out of phase observations are in a similar line of thought, but have a much wider array of causes and frankly weird things behind them. Like right now you could be being observed by a creature in the fifth dimension that you will never see, because our senses only extend to the third dimension world around us. In fact, that's one basis for Lovecraftian cosmic horror stories, so enjoy that. Moving swiftly on. In Star Trek Insurrection we get to see a variation of Starfleet observation technology that is remarkably like cloaking, however thanks to some technicalities it is exempt from the Treaty of Alderaan. The Prime Directive demands that the Federation not interfere with the development of other societies and cultures, especially those that have yet to achieve faster than light travel. For this reason, Starfleet has a variety of observational techniques for undercover officers and crews to continue to research species of interest without being observed. The most common method is simply the application of disguises through either surface level makeup or the modification of an undercover officer's physiology to resemble a planet's natives. Sometimes that's not feasible, however such as when a populace being observed is too small to accommodate the appearance of outsiders. In these cases, a different kind of subterfuge is needed, such as the isolation suits combined with an on-site hidden base. This base is often created in an outcropping of rock, presumably using a transporter, and then a holographic overlay is projected over it, disguising it as the outcrop it replaced. This is a relatively safe method of observation, so long as the power is maintained, although I do imagine that more advanced cultures would have the equipment needed to detect an active hollow grid. These posts were employed to observe the Baku and the Mintakans, but both are notable only because they were uncovered. Alongside the observation post, personnel in the field can don isolation suits, which are 
all-encompassing overalls constructed of a lightweight fabric. These suits work in tandem with the hidden observation post to create a holographic shroud around the wearer. Hollow emitters equipped to the observation post project an image around an isolation suit. This image reflects the land behind the suit when viewed from any angle, masking the field operative. This does nothing to hide signs of the wearer's passing, so field agents utilising this method of covert observation have to be careful to leave no trace of their passing. If the isolation suit is damaged or removed, the holographic overlay loses its target and the wearer is revealed. These suits require an entire system of hollow projectors, which themselves are easily detectable with the right know-how and therefore only suitable for the observation of primitive cultures and have little benefit for actual espionage. This is probably why they do not violate the Treaty of Alderaan. So, that covers the three cloaking types that I wanted to talk about today. I think the Treaty of Alderaan must have some very specific wording banning cloaking devices for military or espionage uses rather than simply saying, don't copy the Romulan style cloaking screen. Because if this was the case, the interphasic cloak would have been exempt as it falls into the category of mild dimensional travel or at the very least space-time manipulation as opposed to the manipulation of sensor readings. But then, holographic camouflage is completely fine, probably because of its low level of application when it comes to evading detection by technologically savvy species. There are a myriad of other ways to evade detection too, from stealth ships to emitting scattering fields, or good old fashioned camouflage. One that springs to mind is the biological ability of the shroud that the Jem'Hadar have. Cloaking devices just seem to be the most sought after because it's more mobile and practical. Thanks for watching this video, I've been Rick and I'll see you again from an interphasic cloak for another lore video. Goodbye.